Today let's dive into the world of steel's yield strength, from understanding its significance to exploring the diverse range of yield strengths. First let's get to know what is steel. Steel is a versatile alloy of iron and carbon, known for its strength, durability, and wide range of applications. However, not all steel is created equal. Different steel types are formulated with varying compositions and processing techniques, resulting in a spectrum of properties like yield strength, ductility, the ability to bend without breaking, weldability, and corrosion resistance. Then what is yield strength? Yield strength is a crucial property used to define a material's resistance to permanent deformation under stress. It's the maximum stress a material can withstand before it begins to deform plastically. In simpler terms, it's the point at which an elastic material, one that springs back after being bent, becomes a plastic material, one that retains the bent shape. Here's an analogy. Imagine bending a metal spoon. Up to the yield strength, the spoon will bend but spring back to its original shape once you release the pressure. But if you bend it past the yield strength, the spoon will stay bent permanently. Then why does yield strength appear? To break down its fundamentals? We need to get to know what are elastic and plastic deformations first. In elastic deformation, the material returns to its original shape once the stress is removed. Imagine stretching a rubber band. As you pull, it gets longer and deforms, but when you let go, it snaps back to its original size. This is elastic behavior. On the other hand, plastic deformation is permanent. Think of bending a paperclip. Once you bend it past a certain point, it won't spring back entirely and retains a permanent bend. Yield strength is the specific point where elastic behavior ends and plastic deformation begins. In other words, it's the maximum stress a material can withstand before it starts to deform permanently. Then how does yield strength and deformation relate? The following stress-strain curve can help you out. The curve starts with a linear region where stress is proportional to strain or deformation. At the yield point, the curve deviates from linearity. This signifies the onset of plastic deformation. The stress required to reach this point is the yield strength. Beyond the yield point, the material enters the plastic deformation zone. Here, the amount of deformation increases significantly with relatively small increases in stress. Essentially, the higher the yield strength, the greater the stress a material can endure before it starts to deform permanently. After being exposed to the basics of yield strength, let's put it into a context to discuss the yield strength of steel. First, let's comb through the key factors influencing yield strength of steel. The first factor is carbon content. Generally, higher carbon content increases yield strength in steel. Carbon atoms act like tiny obstacles within the steel's crystal structure, making it harder for the material to deform. Second, alloy composition. Adding alloy elements can greatly increase yield strength, with each element providing unique strengthening effects. Manganese refines grain size and improves hardenability. Chromium increases strength and corrosion resistance. Nickel enhances strength and toughness, especially at lower temperatures. Molybdenum improves high temperature strength. Third, microstructure. The microscopic arrangement of grains and phases in steel greatly affects its yield strength. Smaller grains usually mean higher strength. Also, harder phases like carbides can block deformation and increase yield strength. Fourth, heat treatment. It can dramatically alter the microstructure, consequently the yield strength of steel. Here are two key techniques. Quenching rapidly cools the steel from a high temperature, trapping a metastable microstructure called martensite. Martensite is very hard and brittle, leading to a significant increase in yield strength. However, it can also be quite brittle. Tempering reheats quenched steel to a lower temperature, helping to relieve some of the internal stresses introduced by quenching and improved toughness without sacrificing too much strength. The specific tempering temperature determines the final balance between strength and toughness. By combining different heat treatment processes, steel properties, including yield strength, can be tailored for specific applications. Fifth, strain rate. Strain rate refers to the speed at which a material is deformed. Generally, higher strain rates, faster deformation, lead to an increase in yield strength. This is because the material has less time to rearrange its internal structure to accommodate the deformation. The last one, temperature. As temperature increases, the material's atoms vibrate more intensely, 
making it easier for them to move past each other and deform. Consequently, yield strength typically decreases with increasing temperature. To unveil the yield strength of steel that varies with its types in detail, we have created a table comparing the yield strength as well as some other properties of four common stainless steels for your reference. For four types of steel in the table, the yield strength of carbon steel increases with carbon content. More alloying elements will further enhance the strength of steel, and tool steel prioritizes high hardness and wear resistance. While for stainless steel, its yield strength varies based on the specific type. Austenitic stainless steels, for example 304, 316, offer good corrosion resistance but have a moderate yield strength, typically around 200 to 300 megapascals or 30,000, 45,000 psi. Martensitic stainless steels, for example 410, prioritize strength and hardness, achieving yield strengths in the range of 400 to 600 megapascals or 60,000, 90,000 psi. However, their corrosion resistance is lower than austenitic types. Duplex stainless steels combine the corrosion resistance of austenitic steels with the higher yield strength of martensitic steels, typically reaching 500 to 700 megapascals or 70,000, 100,000 psi. Now you might be wondering if there are ways to maximize the yield strength of steel. The truth is that while there's no single maximum yield strength for steel, some alloy steels can achieve remarkably high values. Here's what pushes the limits. First, microalloying. Adding very small amounts of specific elements like niobium or vanadium can significantly improve yield strength without compromising ductility as much as traditional alloying elements. Apart from microalloying, there are many advanced processing techniques such as thermomechanical processing or TMP. TMP involve controlled rolling and cooling during steel production, refining the grain structure and enhancing strength. To wrap things up, let's recap what we've covered today. The mind map clearly depicts the outline of today's sharing. We have talked about what is steel and yield strength and elaborated on the fundamentals of the yield strength, as well as its relationship with deformation. On top of these, we have specifically introduced the yield strength of steel and chosen four common steels to compare. At last, we've briefed on how to push the upper limit of the yield strength using two methods. Hope you will have a good understanding of yield strength after watching today's video. And if you want to learn more about 3D printing, CNC machining and finishing, or you are seeking for services, please subscribe to our channel, stay tuned and reach us without hesitation. We are Union Fab, a leading provider of 3D printing and manufacturing services that can bring your projects to life.